Welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we'll be talking about Tumor Lysis Syndrome. Tumor Lysis Syndrome or simply TLS refers to the constellation of metabolic disturbances that occurs when large number of tumor cells are killed rapidly, leading to the release of intracellular ions and metabolic byproducts into the systemic circulation. Clinically, the syndrome is characterized by rapid development of hyperkalemia, hyperuricemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia and acute kidney injury aka high. No uniform definition of TLS has been broadly adopted. However, the Cairo Bishop criteria can be used to make the diagnosis. This can be laboratory or clinical tumor lysis syndrome. Laboratory tumor lysis syndrome requires two or more of the following criteria which must happen within 24 hours in a time frame from 3 days before and 7 days after initiation of chemotherapy. Serum uric acid of at least 25% increase from baseline or at least 8.0 mg per dl. Serum potassium of at least 25% increase from baseline or at least 6.0 mL per liter. Phosphate of at least 25% increase from baseline or at least 0.5 mg per dl in adults or 6.5 mg per dl in children. Calcium of at least 25% decrease from baseline or less than 7.0 mg per dl. Clinical tumor lysis syndrome involves meeting the criteria for laboratory tumor lysis syndrome plus at least one of the following. Serum creatinine of greater than 1.5 times the upper limit of normal van age adjusted reference rate, seizures, and cardiac arrhythmia or sudden death. Tumor lysis syndrome arises most commonly about 48 to 72 hours following initiation of chemotherapy, but it can happen spontaneously in some high grade hematologic malignancies. Rapid tumor cell lysis results in the release of intracellular content into the circulation, leading to metabolic derangement. Normally, there are higher concentrations of potassium, phosphate, and proteins inside the cell. Thus, lysis of the cell results in release of these intracellular ions and protein. Hyperkalemia is often the earliest laboratory manifestation. Lysis of the tumor cells also leads to release of the intracellular phosphate, leading to hyperphosphatemia. Precipitation of serum calcium as calcium phosphate in soft tissues leads to depletion of serum calcium, leading to hypocalcemia. Nucleic acid purines which are released during the tumor cells breakdown are ultimately metabolized to uric acid by the liver, leading to hyperuricemia. The kidneys, being the primary organs involved in the clearance of uric acid, potassium and phosphate are also involved in tumor lysis. Uric acid nephropathy is the major cause of acute kidney injury in TLS. Its development is due to mechanical obstruction by uric acid crystals in the renal tubules. Another cause of AKI in TLS is acute nephrocarcinosis from calcium phosphate crystal precipitation. Tumor lysis syndrome occurs most often in patients with acute leukemias with high white blood cell counts and in those with high grade lymphomas in response to aggressive treatment and in a variety of solid tumors such as hepatoblastoma. The high risk group of cancers for TLS development include advanced bucket lymphoma, Acute lymphocytic leukemia ALL with WBC of at least 100,000 cells per microliter. Acute myeloid leukemia AML with WBC of at least 100,000 cells per microliter. Intermediate risk malignancies include early stage bucket lymphoma, ALL with WBC less than 100,000 cells per microliter, and AML with WBC of between 25,000 to 100,000 cells per microliter. Low risk malignancies for tumor lysis syndrome include Chronic lymphocytic leukemia CLL, chronic myeloid leukemia CML in the chronic phase, AML with WBC less than 25,000, multiple myeloma, and solid cancers. Some of the most common chemotherapeutic agents reported to cause tumor lysis syndrome include paclitaxel, fludarabine, etoposide, and hydroxyurea. In tumor lysis syndrome, a constellation of clinical signs and symptoms may develop prior to the initiation of chemotherapy. But more commonly, it occurs within 72 hours after administration of cytotoxic therapy. There could be presence of urinary symptoms such as dysuria or painful urination, oliguria or reduction in urine output, and flank pain. Symptoms of hypocalcemia such as anorexia, vomiting, and seizures. Symptoms of hyperkalemia such as weakness and paralysis. Other manifestations of tumor lysis syndrome include lethargy, syncope, and sudden death. Physical examination findings usually reflect the severity of underlying metabolic derangement. Hyperkalemia can cause paresthesia and cardiac arrhythmias. Severe hypocalcemia can cause paresthesia, positive Vostek and Drosel sign, carpopedia spasms, seizures, and cardiac arrest. 
It is crucial for clinicians to prevent, detect, and treat TLS early in order to prevent life-threatening complications. Management of tumor lysis syndrome requires the initiation of preventive measures in high-risk patients prior to cancer treatment. The mainstay of TLS prevention include adequate hydration, control of hyperuricemia with allopurinol and raspberry case, and close monitoring of electrolyte abnormalities. Treatment options of hyperkalemia include hypertonic glucose and insulin infusion, loop diuretics and ion exchange resins. Treatment of hyperphosphatemia involves reduction of phosphate intake and phosphate binders such as aluminum and hydroxide. When recurrent hypocalcemia is present, a continuous intravenous infusion of calcium gluconate can be initiated. Hemodialysis should be considered for every patient with excessively elevated uric acid, phosphate, and potassium.